Hello and welcome to today's episode of SciShow Talk Show. Today we have with me Emily Grasley, the host of the new show, The Brain Scoop. You should go to youtube.com slash The Brain Scoop and subscribe now. So today, Emily, you have brought me some science news, some interesting science things, right? Yes. yes. I'm sure you are very familiar with the problems facing rhinos. In the last three years alone, there have been something like 400 rhinos poached to sell their horns as trophies and on the Chinese yeah. black market. And to me, this seems like a problem from 10 years ago. Like, the fact that it's getting worse. They're just reacting to um, a heightened popularity in the market. I mean, and what can you do? I, like, you can't stop Chinese people from wanting rhino horns. No, and that's the problem. With education, we're, they're trying to let people know that, hey, this is a horn. It's made out of keratin. It's the same material that your hair and your fingernails are made out of. It has no special or magical or medicinal properties at all. It's not going to help you in the bed. That's actually a misconception. No, okay. The uh, this is the, an interesting thing about the story that I read. Um, rhino horn is medicinally used to treat fevers and convulsions. So I feel a little better now because it's a little less selfish. If yeah. you're like, my child is having seizures, I need some rhino horn versus I am not what I once was. But there is good news. Okay. This article that I recently read on Popsi was talking about this group in Africa and they have developed a three-part method that is supposed to be proactive in deterring poachers. First, they take a rhino horn and they use a high-pressured pneumatic device. Like in, a sandblaster? Kind what? of, actually. They infuse the rhino horn with the same kind of pink dye that shows up on security and x-ray scanners. Okay. So this works by deterring um, poachers who might want to use the entire horn as like a trophy or something. And even if they grind it up, which is how rhino horn is sold on the black market as a ground powder, they won't be able to smuggle it through airports anymore because this pink dye will show up on mm -hmm. the scanner and like tips off the airport security. So that's a good thing. Another awesome thing that they're doing is they're implanting GPS tracking devices within the horn. So like one at the top, one at the middle, one at the bottom? I, I'd assume so. <laughs> you know, I'm not exactly, I haven't looked into the exact placement of they're where they're like putting these. just like core out a little hole and then stuff a GPS yeah. tracker in there. So they'll know where these rhino horns are at all times. They'll know mm. if it's been cut up, if it's been segmented, when it happened, where it happened, which is a lot more cost effective than training 24 hour armed guards, which is what some mm -hmm. of these, you know, nature preserves have had to do. And the last thing, which I think is the most interesting thing about this group is that they are um, infusing the horn with an ectoparasiticide. Which, <laughs> which is really fascinating. An ectoparasiticide is something that it'll live topically on top of the keratin. It doesn't become circulated throughout the rhino's blood system or anything like that. It doesn't hurt the rhino at all. And what this does is if you grind it up and ingest it, it'll make you very sick, which deters them from hopefully wanting to use it even more. I mean, that's kind of terrible. It's just an awareness thing. It's yeah. an education thing. It's mm -hmm. reinforcing the fact that this has no medicinal value. Hey, if you have a headache, chew on your fingernail, and it'll give you the same amount of medicinal power as, you know, butchering and poaching these, you know, highly valued and protected species. Maybe we should get some real fever medicines and, <laughs> and seizure medicines also because access to I mean, adequate health care they're obviously willing to pay for it it's mm -hmm. not cheap actually it is worth its weight and gold as a powder gold is about sixteen hundred dollars an ounce um rhino horn is a sixteen to eighteen hundred dollars an ounce it's interesting in that it's a, it's a cultural yeah. misunderstanding yeah um but with like i mentioned with increased education about these things um hopefully we can make a positive difference awesome so well I think that brings us to the next segment, which is Stump Hank. Yes. And uh, this is actually exciting for me because on Fridays I used to play the game Freak of the Week on yeah. Friday and post a picture of an interesting thing. So this... On your Tumblr. On my Tumblr. So you should go and follow me there for all kinds of fun zoology-related museum things in addition to subscribing to the Brain Scoop. So... So... I'm going to go grab the first one. We're going to get a thing. Uh, what? Okay. Well, you, you, should, you shouldn't have held it. You should... What the frick? So, like, I, I don't even know the orientation. Hold there on, you go. give you it to hold me. hold it? Yeah. It's a little fragile what at the end. What the heck? Tell me, tell me what you think about it. Okay. Right now. So, this looks like vertebra. Okay. Am I right? I'm just gonna, I'm just uh, gonna listen to your assessment. It's light. Mm-hmm. So, I would think 
you know, marine, maybe, some kind of large, this is not, I thought when I first saw it that it was a head, but it is clearly not a head. Mm -hmm. This is a pelvis. Yes, you are correct. Do you know of what, though? No! I don't know of what. <laughs> Step one down. Well, if it's a pelvis, then it's not a fish. This, well, I mean, there. okay, okay, this is definitely a spinal column. Mm -hmm. But it's fused. Closer. It's all fused. Uh-huh. Because you can actually see down the hole there where the spinal cord goes, which is pretty cool. Yeah. But what the heck? Uh, Do you want to know what it is? Yeah, but don't tell me yet. Okay. Does it live in the water? No. Oh, God. <laughs> is it bigger than a bread basket? That's yeah. not actually the question. It's so light. Mm -hmm. Is it? It's not a bird. Why would else? Why else would it be so light? It is a bird. Yeah. It's yep. a. What? Yeah. Okay. I don't know. You want me to tell you? Is it alive on the Earth today? Yes. Okay. It is. All right. Yeah. Okay. It um. You're actually holding it upside down, too. There you go. That um, doesn't help me at all, <laughs> by the way, just to be clear. This is the sin sacrum of an ostrich. An ostrich, so, of course. Yes. Babe, I was like, it's a bird. Yeah. But it's too big to be a bird. It's a huge bird. Oh, because I forgot about ostriches. Yeah. God dang it. I know. Um, you can. I don't know. You can kind of see it. These, these are the where the femur attached. Right, what is the point of these bones? For balance. I love this thing. That is crazy cool. And yeah. when I first saw it, I thought it was a skull, and I thought these were eye holes. You wouldn't be the first. Well, yeah. Well, I am stumped. Yes. What are we going to see? So we're, we're going to move on to our animal segment of the evening now. Animal Wonders has brought a truly amazing animal for us to check out. Um, and we'll, I won't even tell you. Let's just have it happen. This is how it happened. Um, Jesse from Animal Wonders will join us, and we will show you something very cool. Yeah, now. Today we have an extremely special guest. We have Cass the Arctic Fox. Yes. <laughs> this is Jesse from Animal Wonders. Thanks for coming. And uh, this may be an extra brief episode because Cass is a wild fox he is. on Let's my come on, on my here. desk. <laughs> It's <laughs> pretty much the best day of my life right now. <laughs> I'm not even lying. So this is the winter coat. This is the winter coat. Very he fluffy. Is huge. Very yes. fluffy. Very white. We actually have the summer coat of an Arctic fox right here. He will look almost like that. He's actually a little bit grayer, less brown. And so they do vary in color a little bit mm -hmm. per individual. But yeah, this this coat is massive. Uh, we can't get our finger down to his skin. It's just yeah. so thick. Yeah. So tell us about Arctic foxes. <laughs> <laughs> well, they live in the Arctic. Yeah. <laughs> and is the... this a full-grown skull? Mm -hmm. So is that the size of that thing's head? Yeah. Wow, yeah. that's a lot of fur. That is yeah. <laughs> so much fur. <laughs> oh my, you are so beautiful. Hi, buddy. Wow. Good job. So let's let's talk about a couple things that we see on him. Um, you know, the, they're most famous for being able to change change white in the winter time. Yeah. Um, and then there you go, just settling, buddy. It's okay. So let's take a look at a couple of other things on him. He has, he has really short ears, mm -hmm. and uh, he has a black nose and black eyes. Now the black around his eyes are gonna help him see. So kind of like a football player puts that black paint underneath so they can see the ball better and so mm -hmm. there's no glare. He's going to have that black around his eyes so he can see in the snow so there's no glare so he can actually go hunting. He's going to have a shorter nose than other foxes and he's actually going to have shorter legs than other foxes as well. And all those things are going to help him conserve his mm -hmm. his warmth. Um, because That's why the small so ears cold. too. You don't yes. want to get ear frostbite. Exactly. And this huge tail is also going to help. So he's going to curl up and that's going to cover up his face and nose on that short fur on his face there. So he's going to look pretty adorable. Yeah, yes. Pretty adorable. <laughs> and these guys are actually uh, close to being put on the endangered species list. Um, a couple of their populations uh, have gone from about 20 breeding pairs to four breeding mm. pairs. Um, and one of the reasons is because the red fox, who actually, he is one of his best friends, Serafina is a red fox, they live together. But Aww. in the wild, it's, it's a little different. They're not going to be friends. The red fox is bigger. 
and uh, more aggressive is going to take over their den. And red fox couldn't survive up there before, but now they can without so your, all these special your things. range is shrinking. Yeah. So is the color for hiding from prey or predators? Everything. Everything. I yeah. guess that makes sense. Yeah. Everything so up there is going to be white. They do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They would be preyed on by, you know, polar bear maybe. They're not very fast, but they're going to be preyed on by the um, wolves up there mm -hmm. and by birds of prey. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. So that's a big bird, golden eagles. Yeah, yeah. we'll go up there. Yep. One of my favorite things that I know about the Arctic fox is their ability to sense things underneath the snow. Yeah. So you can get those pictures of them like leaping up almost vertically into the air and then coming down and they'll get like stuck like three quarters of their body <laughs> into the snow. <laughs> they look yeah, graceful yeah. going up, coming down, it's a little dirty. Slams though. right in yeah. there, yeah, diving into snow. <laughs> Why is his mouth open? <laughs> he should actually be done now. He's, He's getting done. a little bit hot. He's like, I, this is <laughs> going, I'm lot. hot, I'm panting. Oh. I have this massive fur coat on, and I'm inside under lights. Okay. <laughs> so it's a little hot. <laughs> All right. Well, Cass, it was a pleasure to meet you. I'm sorry that it's so hot. Yeah. Let's get you cooled off. Yes. Yeah. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having us. Oh, it's hard to be an arctic fox inside. Well, that was a pretty fantastic experience. Thank you for joining us here today, Emily, and for showing off your ostrich pelvis. Anytime. Hey. Is that what it was? Yeah, yep, ostrich pelvis. What else was it, though? You had a different word. The sinsacrum. The sinsacrum. <laughs> That's an awesome metal band album ostrich name ostrich sinsegra <laughs> thank you for joining us here at the scishow talk show go and subscribe at youtube.com slash the brain scoop if you would like to see more of emily of course you would and we'll see you next time high five